Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video about Vulcan C and GLFW Alright, so this video won't be about learning the new next shiny thing about Vulcan But this tutorial will be just uh, basically we're gonna refactor our code Because in fact this is the best time to refactor our code uh, Because then, like for now, we just completed the context and the window and the, the swap chain stuff and, and, and you know stuff like that but uh, next up after this video we will start an actual rendering like you actually using this whole all this craziness to actually r render stuff okay to actually start our graphics operations etc etc so first of all let's start by a bug fix by uh, the same person that actually contributed in the last in, in the previous video which I'm so grateful for because it's a really interesting uh, he he noticed something that could have easily uh, made our lives much harder in the future but anyway so basically this is my alt code and this is the fix that he gave okay so this is why C macros are really people are really frightened of because you can easily mess it up without even noticing. So macros, after all, you know, or any prop preprocessors, basically the ones that starts with this guy right here, are basically text processors. All they do is copy pasta right there, just that. Okay, there is nothing crazy, right? So the thing is, this argument doesn't follow the semantics of the function arguments, okay? And what that means, what this glorious names mean, right? Basically, so here, whatever parameter you pass here, it just gets copied to it, to whatever you have, uh, to whatever it finds here, just like, you know, replace each, each word, and that's basically what it does, it just copy and paste. And replace and stuff like that that's all what processor preprocessor does for example include it just goes ahead to this file gfw3 uh, just like this you know and it it copies that whole file and it put it instead of this include thing inside of here the, the all the contents that's basically it like literally it does that okay it goes for each include and it just goes ahead copy the contents of that file and put it here that's basically it and that's how preprocessors work. Now, why that's a problem? Okay, so here I'm actually using this error argument, and this macro argument, I'm using it twice, okay? And what that means that it's gonna go ahead and copy whatever I give it in this argument, copy here, it's going to paste it there and it's going to paste it here without any changes, nothing. Like literally it's going to copy and paste. That's it. Uh, but in terms of functions, when you have an int error code, uh, and that's what I was my intention, is that it goes ahead. First of all, it actually executes all of its arguments once, then it runs. So basically when you pass in a parameter in a function, it only execute once, okay? But when you pass it into a macro, it executes as long as how much you, you pasted it, right? Uh, so in this case, uh, since I'm actually calling, like using expect with functions and passing the error as a function call, like for example here, make a great instance. Now that's what that means, that it's gonna go ahead, it's gonna copy that function call here and here, instead of reusing, like calling it once and reusing the result. And that's what was my intention. Uh, and I did learn this about this, in like when I was learning about C language. But well, <laughs> I forgot about it after getting lost in the other uh, languages like Rust, Lua, and stuff like that. But anyways, um, so okay, so how he fixed that? So he basically introduced an intermediate variable called error code, and I understand why he used error instead of error because, in fact, as you notice here, now the problem with actually making variables in C. Um, is that you cannot 
use the same names like for example in rust if you use the same name it will just shadows that variable in the scope okay in that particular scope but in c no there is not that things like you only can only declare one variable per block uh so yeah per scope i mean so yeah nice um now basically he made an intermediate variable and he basically uh, for example, if this is a function call, it will only run once and it will store its result into this intermediate variable error code and then it will basically check, you know, check if error code is just like what we're doing here, what we're trying to do here. Okay, and basically, well, this is the same exact thing, although we changed error macro parameter into this intermediate variable so we can actually reuse the result. That's basically what's happening there, all right? It's so simple, but it's, it does make a lot of change, a lot of difference, okay? Uh, luckily, this is not so, so bad. Um, it is bad, but it's not that bad, why? Because too simply, um, it will run once if there's no error, okay? Because it will only check error once and it will find no error and then it won't run this guy. But if there is an error, it will actually run this and it will also run this, which means we're gonna execute the function twice. Now, our problem actually arise when we have an error. Uh, but either way, this is the correct way of doing it. And, and there we go. Um, so thankful, so grateful for the person that uh, noticed this and made the pull request into the repo. That's so nice. All right, lovely stuff. Now let's go back into our code. Okay. So next thing that we're gonna do basically is, now the thing is, I think I made a big mistake when I actually uh, considered if the window is resizable in, in this beginner's tutorial because as a beginner's tutorial, it's just going to make everything much harder and it's going to make the code much rigid and harder to refactor, etc. So, and even some people aren't even interested into knowing the details of what happens when the window gets resized. Most games, you don't resize the window or sometimes even you just put a full screen and it never equates full screen. <laughs> So for now, we're just gonna completely remove anything that have to do with resizing the window and recreating the swap chain and stuff like that, because it's just gonna make our life much easier and it's gonna make beginners, you know, it's like much less distracted, you know, and our code will be more organized for now and it's easy to refactor too. And for the people who don't need such feature, they can just skip it. And of course, we're gonna add this after we actually get something uh, working into the screen, which is basically a Vulcan triangle, hopefully. Um, so yeah, let's go. So first of all, let's start by removing this uh, resizable thing. All right, interesting. Let's remove this frame buffer with frame buffer. I don't need it for now. Window monitor, right? Allocator, full screen. Uh, recreate swap chain, no need. Mm -hmm. Nice stuff. Okay, that's all we need there. And I don't need this uh, callback. Uh, remove this whole thing that relates to the to the swap chain recreation and window size change and stuff like that. I mean, frame buffer size and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, and you'll notice that the code will become much cleaner and easy to read. But anyway, state window resizable instead of this, just say GFW false for now. As you can see, we're just gonna hard code and we're just gonna assume that the window is not resizable at all, basically just to keep things much, much simpler. Okay, so yeah, lovely stuff. Next up, next up, next up is... Okay, let's check the errors that we have first. Uh, so here we have this guy, uh, and I'm basically gonna remove this, and I'm gonna make sure to... Uh, also, I need to, I'm gonna remove this for now. And for inside the init, let's make sure to create our swap chain since we removed it from the loop. So create swap chain, state, and there we go. So basically we create our swap chain once at the start. And then of course we destroy our swap chain once at the end. Now let's go to hold control and click on create swap chain. Of course, if you have this feature in your IDE, 
and then it will take you to the implementation of that function nice all right cool stuff actually let's see the other hold on a second let's remove this guy window resizable we don't need it anymore and let's go back to that function to uh, to uh, change some stuff there okay interesting create swap chain all right so i noticed i have a bug here in this code too uh, which is crazy um and all right so present mode okay so present mode count format okay notice that here i'm um, instead of malloc uh, allocating uh, you know memory for uh, present mode count time size of vk present mode khr i'm actually allocating for uh, format count <laughs> okay that's so bad all right so let's actually change that and also i'm doing the same mistake here nice and by the way for the size of we can create it much better much more reliable way of doing this is basically um maybe uh is to basically say this, I think. Hold on a second. Size of uh, VK surface format HR. Now, I'm basically going to say maybe I can say formats. But to be honest, you know what? For the sake of the tutorial, I'll just keep it like this because it's much simpler to deal with. But basically, what you can do, you can basically uh, deallocate format. It's going to give you the size of uh, each element which is basically VK surface format. It's the same thing, but yeah, anyway, for now, let's just skip that. Um, all right, all good now, hopefully. Present mode count, nice. Uh, next thing that I also wanna do is I wanna make sure that the freeze are on the particular blocks. Like for example, formats, we're gonna uh, free it after getting our format. So it's easier to reform, like to refactor later and to split this into sections since each free is with its own section. Nice. Okay, lovely. Um, we don't need this swap chain intermediate variable because in fact, right now we don't have a, a, you know old swap chain anymore. We're just gonna basically go ahead, directly put it into our struct, just like that. Um, next up is we don't care about old swap chain. There you go nice and then next thing let's see swap chain images okay for this one though we're gonna actually uh, cut it and we're gonna remove this whole thing and we're just gonna put it inside of the cleanup function and of course after uh, destroying the image views so it's of course basically we're destroying each and each image view inside the swap chain image views array then we actually go ahead we free the swap chain image views array then we free the swap chain images uh, array and notice again uh, to reiterate notice that I didn't actually go ahead and do the same thing for swap chain images because I didn't create swap chain images myself the swap chain and the operating system etc is the one that is responsible to actually create and allocate memory for swap chain images so they're the one who's responsible to actually destroy them uh, because if you notice there i actually i only said vk create image view but i never said vk create image okay because that's happened in the in the other side okay it's not my responsibility uh, which is interesting okay um so yeah lovely and here, basically, I only deallocated the array, not the actual images. Okay, nice stuff. All right, next stuff is, let's fix these things. I don't need this stuff anymore. Okay, what's next? VK get swap chain images KHR. Here, let's make sure to use state swap chain. There we go. State swap chain. Mm-hmm. Nice, lovely. Uh, okay, lovely stuff. Okay, component mapping clamp. All right, I think that's it, hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully. Swap chain image count, time size of image views, lovely stuff. 
Really lovely stuff. Okay, so that's basically it, I think, for the fixes and and for the the first refactor uh, of removing the that swap chain craziness. So let's make sure to actually uh, run vk config just so we make sure we don't have any uh, Vulkan problems. And let's run our application. And as you can see, make sure it runs perfectly. Uh, otherwise, make sure that you didn't create any kind of craziness. Okay, and as you can see, it also exits without any problems. And if you're curious, here's the changes. And if you're using Git, you can easily uh, use see what are your changes, which is really useful. All right, so basically, here's the changes that I've done. I removed window resizable uh, Boolean value from the struct. I removed this frame buffer width and height. I removed the recreate swap chain Boolean value. I removed this frame buffer size callback. I changed uh, this state window resizable. I hard coded it into false for now. And I removed this, that stuff that relates to the frame buffer size callback and frame buffer size, etc. Okay. I also removed actually not removed right now right now i actually edited of course this is a bug fix instead of a format count we had to do present mode count same thing here um here i just made sure that we're freeing as you can see we're freeing with the format sec in the format section instead of having each free in its own place uh but yeah anyways so free formats swap chain i removed that intermediate swap chain variable because we don't need it anymore because we're not using old swap chain anymore we're not regarding that this guy is gone to the uh to the hmm, to the destruction uh, uh to the uh, to the cleanup function right and then here i'm no longer destroying the swap chain yeah basically that's the old swap chain and then I'm basically assigning the new swap chain, but this is no not needed anymore because we're, I'm not regarding the old swap chain and because we don't have an old swap chain anymore. So couldn't get swap chain images count. I Did I remove this or what exactly? Yeah, I just changed it from swap chain to state swap chain because we don't, we no longer have that intermediate variable. Okay. Um, all right, so that's pretty much it. And we also added this create swap chain function call into the init function. And here, instead of, uh, let's see, so inside the loop, okay. So we removed this whole junk right here. As you can notice, it's much simpler right now when, we, when you, you don't do that craziness. Okay, so free cleanup, free. Okay, I just made sure to free the, the arrays. And in fact, this is a bad, like this was probably a bug actually, because either way, if I was recreating the swap chain or not, I should have actually freed the, the arrays correctly. And right now that's also another bug fix, okay? And here I removed that variable because it's no, it no longer exists. All right, so that's pretty much it. And just to make sure we keep ourselves uh, uh, nicely done. In fact, I'm gonna amend it with the. Uh, uh, not gonna amend it actually. Uh, swap chain creation. Uh, swap chain. Are. Actually, let's just say refactor. Refactor uh, or let's say remove. A resizable window support. For simplicity. In fact, instead of remove, I'm going to say defer because in fact, we're not going to remove it completely. We're just deferring it to a later stage. Okay. Uh, for now. Yeah. And here I'm just going to make sure to commit and push, but for now, just commit. Okay. I'm going to push later on. Of course, this is the changes. I'm going to commit. And there we go, I committed that one, nice stuff. Now let's actually go to the next refactoring. This is the big overhaul of this whole thing because we're gonna change the structure of the program a bit. Okay, so we have this monolithic, currently this monolithic state uh, thing, okay. So I'm gonna actually split this into multiple structs, hopefully. Okay, so how to actually do that? 
Well, let's see. Okay, so you can notice that this could be done in a config kind of struct. Uh, this window and swap chain, to be honest with, it, with you, I, I think the swap chain should be linked to the window, right? In the same struct, right? Um, uh, because, or like, if I'm, if I'm wrong, let me know. Tell me your suggestions in the comments. I'm so bad at refactoring stuff. But really, let me know if you if you think anything should change or or I did something wrong or something could be better. But yeah, anyways. Um, but this is just my thoughts. Um, I'm not even inspiring from anything really. But anyways, so Vulcan for this one though for this API version Q family like choosing the Q the device and stuff like that. This is basically the context. It's similar to OpenGL where you have to create a graphical context. This is kind of like the same thing. We're basically getting ready to actually start our rendering process. Like we're getting our device, our logical device. We're getting our Q. Uh, you know, this surface will be actually a part of the window struct, but yeah. So yeah, that's basically what I'm going to try to do, hopefully. Um, so let's get started. So type diff, type diff struct. Okay. And I'm going to call this one config. Type diff struct. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, nice. So type dip struct. Let's call this window. And I'm also going to have a render, but for the render, we're going to actually uh, implement it in the next parts. And that's why I chose to actually refactor right now in this part. So that is lovely. And the render is basically the last one. So after that, we have the context, surely. Type the struct. You can even call it graphical context, but let's just stay general for now. Let's give it a general name in context, okay? Lovely stuff. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So yeah. And this basically, this config stuff will go to, in fact, this is not exactly a config though. Well, I mean, yeah, it could be in some sense. So let's just for now put that inside the config. We're going to see later how, uh, what could change. For this, guys, we're going to put it inside the window. This API version. For the swap, let me make sure to actually merge the swap chain stuff together. Just so I can grab it at the same time. The surface, same thing because surface is kind of like attached to the window and also attached to the, to the to the swap chain basically. And right now we just have these guys right here. Nice. So let's just copy the, the whole stuff into the actual window. And next up is basically this Vulcan stuff, which is gonna go of course into the context. Right now, currently, we don't have anything yet in the render, but surely we're going to do in the next part. For the state, though, for our state, well, uh, not sure if I'm going to leave state, but for now, let's just say it's going to basically group all of these components together. So it's going to have a config. Um, uh, or maybe you actually create a new state using the parameter config. No, application name, engine name. Um, yeah, I think so. I think so. And in fact, we can grab this allocator into the context too. Maybe. Hmm. Maybe I'm overthinking it here. Um. Well, anyway, let's just not overthink it for now. Let's just go ahead with the flow. So config, and we also have a window. And we have a uh, context and we have a render. Render. Okay. Lovely stuff. What's going on here? Type the struct window. What's the problem? Um, expected at the end. Oh, yeah. No, man. So I have to actually use these guys. Let's go. Okay. Lovely. Now we basically boiled it down, but now we have 89 <laughs> errors. Oh my God. That's going to be a long journey. Oh, mate. <laughs> 
Okay, nice, 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 nice. Let's start at the the bottom. The bottom. Now, this is actually the config, pretty much, right? So, config, there you go. Uh huh. API version. Field designator API version does not refer to any field in type config. I mean, that is true because it should be in config. Yeah, let's go back to API version. Let's go. That should be inside the actual config. Uh huh. API version. And there's also, we can actually optimize the structs later on for align aligning but anyway for now let's just go with it okay and it state loop state cleanup state and of course we're gonna create a state but in fact thinking about it i can just leave this as state you know uh-huh and then i can basically say dot config you know equal to right and add like do this and do this basically simple as that nice uh-huh lovely stuff and that's basically it we have a state and inside of it there is a config mm -hmm. and now initialize state loop state and cleanup state okay lovely so 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 ak destroys warp chain okay so all right now what's interesting here is the fact that it cannot actually uh hmm interesting e okay let's just try let's just try anyway so destroy surface khr and destroy swap chain should be together same thing with window if that's the case but yeah i'll just be basically put those together maybe i mean actually to be honest i'm not sure if that's possible so the surface does depend on the device right um i mean we can actually create it after the context interesting stuff okay so can we create the instance first then create the window basically and uh, in fact create window should be kind of like the last after the whole context stuff and then you create the swap chain and by for the surface kind of similar thing but surface needs the window so we have that out of the way but the thing is for create window we're actually calling gfw in it here which we actually use to get the gfw extension so we cannot call it here we should call it in another place for now uh, let's call it directly i guess uh, after set up in the error handling and logging the info maybe yeah now let's initialize gfw there we go so when we created the instance we have the access to the gfw extensions already by gfw init all right nice stuff but then of course uh, this create window will actually be responsible to also create its own surface and and swap chain basically so uh where is create window hmm create service and create swap chain at the same time but in fact instead of using the state currently here we in fact just can use the, the window but for now let's just keep on going let's just keep on going for now i'm just trying to reorder these things currently okay so destroy surface khr destroy device so, mm -hmm. swap chain, surface together basically, and and of course GFW terminate. What I'm actually calling it, yeah, after exit. So that's nice. Okay, so mm -hmm. we're basically gonna have a destroy window because why not? Okay, destroy window. 
just to keep things, uh, not vacay, <laughs> GFW, just to keep things complete, you know, so we know exactly what we're doing. So even if we like add multiple windows or something like that, then it should be fine, hopefully. So for now it is state window, but of course all these stuff will change really. Of uh, compatible aka struct pass in order to change type of field to GFW window. Can I just pass in that? Pass in window to bear router. Hmm. Well, well, well. I don't know what they're talking about. Stage window. Okay, so currently it is that window. All right, interesting. Well, well I'm just gonna ignore that for now. Yeah. Gonna ignore that for now. Okay, so this is basically destroying the window. Okay, so void destroy window. Okay, I don't know what arguments we need. We probably, yeah, we probably need the state. Maybe we don't. I don't know. We'll see. So, for now, it's fine. Yeah, we, we probably do need the state after all. So we can, or at least basically the context though. Yeah, we do need the context, not the state. Uh, yeah, that is interesting clean up anyways so that's for the destroy window for now now it's next thing is basically destroying the context in some sense and, and by the way this is part the swap chain is part of the window as we said so let's actually make sure to put that there too okay and this is basically destroying the the context okay so void destroy context Okay, lovely stuff. Let's just give it the state for now anyways. I don't know. But yeah, so clean up. So for the cleanup, we're going to first of all destroy the... Uh, let's see. Uh, we're also going to have a void destroy renderer though. Uh, destroy renderer. Let's just have state... And basically right now we're just gonna say destroy render state, okay? And we're also gonna destroy the the window afterwards. And then we destroy the the context. Context. Uh, but in fact the, the state for now, okay, nice. Okay, lovely stuff. Although, to be honest, I would like to, to name these things like, you know, context destroy, context create, stuff like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's actually say context destroy. A uh, bit of a change of naming here. So context destroy here, window destroy. Uh, render destroy. Of course, this is just a preference, but I think it's a good practice. But yeah, so anyway, render destroy. There you go. Window destroy. There you go. And context destroy. There you go. Okay, lovely. All right, awesome stuff. Where is the init? Where is the init, 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 init? There we go, init and loop. Let's actually grab these guys somewhere around here. Okay. So four, let's see how it's gonna go. So here is what I expect. Now, the... Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Render destroy, window destroy, context destroy. So, and there we go. So, this is all basically creating the. By the way, let's call this window create though. Window create. Oh man, what I'm doing? Window create. And we know, passing the state. There you go. 
Uh -huh. Let's make sure to actually call that the same thing. Window destroy, window create. Where is window create though? Interesting. But anyway, uh, and for Mm -hmm. And for this one, it's basically like creating instance, selection physical device, all these things are basically the context. So context create. All right, passing the state, I believe. And there you go. Although, to be honest, I'm probably going to pass in state. Hmm context or something but for now let's just go you know step by step right let's go with step by step for now so void oh man void context create like what <laughs> well, i'm typing that oh my god context create let's go state there you go create instance get q blah 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 and that's basically what is it context create okay amazing stuff all right amazing 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 hmm uh, to be honest with you this is probably gonna give a uh, context later on but for now let's just keep going so basically right now we have we're creating the context we're creating the window and of course we're going to create the render afterwards render create state let's go nice so here we're looping and uh, not gfw window should close blah 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 okay awesome stuff here window should close here, I'm just going to say, actually, instead of doing this, I'm just going to say window should close. Just so I'm going to abstract it away, basically. And void window should close. All right. A lot of errors that we have to fix. And I'm glad I started refactoring now. Instead of, you know, keep on piling more crazy stuff. Uh, so, yeah. And, of course, this actually should return Boolean value. Let's return bool or, or that, basically, that result. Okay. And window should close, of course. Yeah. For now, it's going to take in the, the state. Later on, we're going to change that. But for now, just keep on going. Uh-huh. So render, we're destroying the render first, then the window, then the context, okay. Because basically the context doesn't depend on the window, and the window doesn't depend on the render, but the 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 inverse is true. So yeah, lovely stuff, okay. Context create, window create, and render create, okay. Let's make sure to have these guys, void, window create, state. Okay, let's do the same thing for the render create. Uh huh. Nice. Okay. All right. Lovely stuff. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Uh huh. So you can probably put these guys into their own kind of header like their own files but for now they just keep going okay so where to start now this is some crazy stuff okay q family creating the instance create the window all right interesting stuff So, window should close. So, did I actually give the window its own thing? Oh, what I did here. Like, I was just in the window right now. What happened? The window. 
And I don't like when you say window dot window and stuff like that. Uh, instead of window, I'm just gonna call it handle. Maybe. Uh, so in fact, let's go back into the window thing. I'm gonna call this handle. And why not always put the handle, you know, as as the first parameter? Why not? That would be cool. Fine. All right. Interesting. Mm hmm. What's next? There is also another. Yeah, it's fine. 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 Q family. Blah blah blah. All right. Amazing stuff. So let's go back. As you can see, this is fine. Checks the close flag. Um, this function returns the value of the close flag of the specified window. This function may be called. So what's, what's the problem with this guy though? Window should close. Oh yeah, well, I have to give it the state. Interesting. Okay. All right. State. And there we go. Lovely stuff. So window should close. Now this is fine. Render create. Now let's actually get that window create thing. So window create, create window. Okay, so instead of this craziness, let's actually remove this create window function right here. And let's put it right there. Uh, let's put it right around here. Okay, nice. Let's fix this. So state window. The window full screen, right? No member. Okay, let's see what we have here inside the window. Well, yeah, because it's inside config, right? Ex exactly, yeah, that is true. All right, so window create, in fact, and let's say config dot window full screen. Mm -hmm. uh, state, now instead of state, we're gonna actually say window dot window monitor but instead of saying since we're already saying windows just say monitor okay mm -hmm. same thing here state window dot monitor okay here it's gonna be window dot width hopefully um no hold on what i'm doing here though in fact, instead of doing this uh, hacky little thing, let's just create int width is equal to, by default, it will equal to state config dot with window width, right? But, and the same thing for the height. Okay, awesome stuff. Height, okay, let's go window height. Mm hmm state window dot monitor okay window width so here uh, if it's full screen then we're gonna change the width and the height and basically here we're gonna basically do that window width I mean and then here is the height and there you go the title and then the monitor which is gonna change of course now the monitor is the thing is about monitor, I don't think it is needed to actually store the monitor, to be honest. I mean, hold on a second. Get window. Can I get the monitor the window? I mean, if I can, so why why bother, you know? Like, anyway, let's just say GFW window. Window. Uh, I mean, monitor. GFW. Monitor. Let's go. Monitor. Of course, it's a pointer. Okay, lovely. Oh, in fact, it's only gonna be true if the, it's gonna be null by default, but if it's full screen, then we're gonna say monitor is equal to that stuff. And uh, for mode, we're just gonna pass in the monitor. There you go. Same thing here, we're gonna pass in the monitor. There you go. Lovely stuff. Now, I think we have kind of fixed it for now, but let's make sure to actually go to the window. And uh, by the way, what do you mean by, okay, uh, state config dot window title. There you go. Okay. Lovely stuff.
stage window, sign to window from, yeah, uh, window.handle is equal to that, okay. And I think hopefully that's it for the window. Is that it? Uh, yeah, I think so. The only thing I want to change about the window for now is to, to remove the window monitor. I don't care about it anymore. And for the swap chain, the swap chain, we can also go ahead and abstract it away into its own swap chain thing. It would be much cleaner, I guess. Um, mm -mm -mm. All right, let's see. Mm, yeah. Yeah, fine. Swap chain image counts, swap chain, swap chain images, and swap chain image views. All these guys. Okay, fine. Let's say swap chain because later on we're going to have to recreate it and stuff like that. So we should be ready for that instead of refactoring once again. So type dev struct swap chain. Uh, type dev struct like this and then call it swap chain. I'm just going to have all these craziness. And I don't, I no longer need to say swap chain, just say image count. And here I'm going to call this handle though. And instead of saying swap chain dot swap chain, it's kind of weird to say that. Um, that's why I'm doing it like this. Okay. Lovely. Instead of swap chain images, I'm just going to say images and then image views. And that's basically it. Lovely. No, 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 no. So as you can see, we have a swap chain right now, which is nice. Okay, lovely. Um, I'm probably gonna have the swap, not really, yeah, fine, fine. For now, it's fine. Okay, so you have the surface and the swap chain. Although you could argue, no, 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 because when you recreate the swap chain, you're not going to recreate the surface, right? There's no need to recreate the surface. So there's no need to put it in the swap chain struct. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> so context queue family instance, physical device, device queue. Nice. Now let's go to the, n to the next guys. All right. I'm trying so bad to not, um, make some crazy mistake. Okay, so for context, let's let's go with the context now. So context create. So how these works. Okay, let's see. Create instance and stuff like that. Let's just grab the, all these guys. Log info, select physical device, create surface, select key family, blah, 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 blah. Create surface. Uh, Interestingly enough, the surface needs to needs the instance to get created, so it needs the context. Interesting. Uh, I think I have a little idea for that one, but yeah. So let's just for now let's just go ahead and grab this whole thing. Other than the the swap chain, let's just grab this whole thing. Control X. Let's put it here so it's much easier to reach. So context create. Of course, we're going to have uh, separate files later on, but yeah. So what we have here. So, 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 so. State config to allocator, right? Create device, create queue, context create. Okay, nice, nice, nice. So let's actually start by the first one, which is create instance, which is basically the simplest thing. I made sure that GFW gets initialized at the start, but just actually to make exactly sure, maybe we can call it one. But anyway, anyway, let's just keep it like that for now. Uh, but it may be a good practice to just make sure that GFW init is on. Because in fact, uh, if GFW is already initialized, this won't do anything. But if it's not, it's going to make sure that it's initialized. But for now, it's fine. All right. So basically, I'm, I'm just making sure that create instance doesn't do any kind of crazy weird side effects for now. So state application name. So here right now, we're basically going to see config application name. Here, config engine name, 
and here config API version. Let's go. Nice. And here, same thing, config.allocator. And config dot not config. For this one, it's context dot instance. Hopefully. And there we go. It's working. Nice, lovely stuff. Okay, so I think we're done with create instance. Next thing is log. Log info is interesting because it doesn't need anything, as you can see. It's basically a standalone kind of function. This this is a good one for maybe like, you know, like a util kind of file or something like that. But yeah, select physical device. So for physical device, of course, we're gonna make sure to use context.instance. Uh-huh, state context.instance. Uh, if anyone knows about the performance of this kind of redirections every time, let me know. I may think that this is probably getting optimized somehow from the compiler, but who knows. Uh, either way, it doesn't really matter that much though in this case, but for anyway, so yeah. State physical device, context.physical device. This is basically select physical device, lovely stuff. Next up is create surface. Now create surface, I'm going to leave it for the window stuff. So I'm going to put it uh, up the window, create thing for now. Where is the window create though? There we go. I'm going to leave that on top there. Uh, Let's just copy this whole thing. Or actually, should we? So we, anyway, context create, create device, look like physical device, log info, create instance. Okay, let's put it somewhere around here for now. Uh, create surface. By the way, for create surface, you can just say context dot instance. Here, context.allocator. Uh, actually, no, config. Config.allocator. And here, it's basically window.surface. Nice, lovely. Okay. Couldn't create window surface, lovely. Passing window to, of course, window.handle, though. Okay, interesting. So that's for the surface right there. Window create. Anyway, render create. Okay, so create instance. Now create instance is fine as you see. I don't need log info to be creeping around here. Let's put it on top here. Okay, let's actually rule out the context creation for now. Let's start by that. Okay, Q family state. Mm, that's for the context, right? So context.q family. There we go. Um, same thing for the other ones. Let's just make sure to add the context right there, 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 context right there. Uh -huh. Be aware that if you cache, if you want to cache the context, you may and like you have to consider that sometimes. Like if it's not all pointers, then you should be careful because you can easily, you know, like ruin it. Um, that's why I'm just right now, I'm currently just going ahead and directly doing it. Um, but later on, we may actually try to do that. But yeah, physical device, context of physical device. Right now, I'm just trying to make sure going in stages here, just so I don't get overwhelmed. In fact, I'm already overwhelmed. And if I add more, I'm going to go crazy. So state device, hmm, uh, context.device, okay. Lovely stuff. Uh, it's easier than I thought. Q family device. Q. Okay. So this would really help us in terms of organization and also understanding what are the steps and how the program can be rearranged, et cetera, et cetera. But anyways, clean up, lovely stuff, indeed. All right, what's next? So in fact, right now we have get the queue, we have created the context, we have created the device, we selected the queue family. 
and we selected the physical device that we created the instance and all of that is all good to go now for the window create there you go create the surface all good context destroy now this is interesting just add in context there uh, context there and here config config.allocator uh Although to be honest, config, uh, yeah, fine, fine. Anyways, config the allocator. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Free, 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 free. So window destroy. Well, for the window, it's kind of interesting. Since we're gonna say window dot swap chain dot image views. go so basically just gonna make sure window the swap chain dot that stuff the problem is I'm gonna add that in I there we go uh -huh. for now just you know align it like this don't create some intermediate variables or whatever because you may easily uh, ruin it because of you know copying and pointers and stuff we're gonna take care of that later on right now let's just try to first of all go this stage windows swap chain i feel like some kind of surgeon right now redoing some kind of operation <laughs> oh me all right that's why you should refactor your code from the start kids so <laughs> All right, state uh, config, the allocator, let's go. Okay, nice. Now this one is state window.handle. There we go. And, oh man, there's still my, oh, all that stuff config, uh, not a config context in this case, context.device. Context.instance, context.sir, actually not context in this case. In this case, it's window. There we go. Uh, swap chain is basically window two. And for the allocator, it says, in fact, you know what? Since there's a lot of these state allocator things, let's actually replace them. Let's, uh, can I refactor these guys though? Oh yeah, interesting. So instead of saying state, allocator although would it ruin the uh, the stuff that i did before no it doesn't so that is lovely okay this is a really nice feature in the, my ide so allocator okay config dot allocator what do you mean uh yeah about continue editing maybe huh it doesn't allow me interesting can I just replace this anyways? Just replace it. Uh, it's fine, I think. Hopefully that won't bite me later. So control R. Or how do you replace? I never use the replace feature. <laughs> um, and this is crazy. Refactor, refactor this, change signature, extract, introduce. Hmm. Can I rename? No, we already tried this. Yo, bro, I just want to replace this guy. How do you replace stuff? <laughs> Interesting. Uh, replace. I mean, like, bro, come on. Reformat. Yo, what? Are you kidding me right now? Is it really hard to replace some text? Is it really that hard? Uh, there we go. Okay, why why hide it there, bro? That is weird. Okay, state config.allocator. All right, lovely. Why it's matching all these states? that's weird 
Okay, let's try, hopefully, replace, but there's only four, nice. All right, replace all, and all looks looking great, actually. Declared in, what's going on here? Passing swap chain to parameter of a complete type fake swap chain. What do you mean, window swap chain? Uh, so swap chain is that. Oh, swap chain dot handle. Okay. So in fact, let's look for swap chain. So state window dot swap chain, right? Mm -hmm. Now, instead of that, well, I cannot because there is all these craziness right here. Okay, fine. Let's just do it like this. The handle, basically. We're looking for the handle there. And here, for the device, what about this one? To be exact, this whole thing. State device. Now, instead of uh, this guy, we're going to say context.device. Let's replace all, hopefully. Okay, I'm playing with fire here using the replace tool, but yeah. Um, hopefully it would be all fine. All right. State swap chain image count. Uh, okay, instead of that, swap chain image count. Now, in fact, let's just match the whole thing actually. State swap chain image count. Now for that one, we're gonna say window dot swap chain dot image count. Replace all. And there we go. Swap chain images. Same thing for swap chain images. Instead of image count, we're gonna say Im images. Mm-hmm. Okay, replace all, I think. Lovely. So swap chain image views. And that I can just say image views like this. There we go. Right now I only have 13 errors, which is interesting. State, so instead of state swap chain here, is there anything other than that for the swap chain? Because if not, then I can just replace the other swap chain stuff. So physical device in state, no member named. Okay, there we go. Let's actually do this, state physical device. Same thing here, but now this time it's gonna be context.physical device. Replace all. There we go, state surface. Mm-hmm. Instead of that, we're going to say window.surface, replace all. Let's go, lovely stuff, we're getting there. <laughs> Q family. So, I hope I didn't screw up anything. Really hope so. <laughs> uh, state Q family. Q family. Uh... But it would surely pay off to refactor now, that is for sure. So Q family, uh, no member named Q family. Okay, where did I put the Q family though? Uh, yeah, in the context, right? So context dot Q family. Okay, hopefully that would work out, replace all. And there we go. Now it's just a matter of the swap chain. And since there's only that swap chain things, I can easily just change it without worrying about changing other things. Actually, no. Actually, yeah. Ugh. Anyway, state um, window dot swap chain dot. Let's see window.swapchain. By the way, make sure to go to the comments and if you know, let me know if, if it's a good idea to actually put like, just compose the swap chain with the window because I think it makes lot, it, it, it's logical that the swap chain would always be 
uh, with the window. The same thing with the surface, especially. So yeah, window dot swap chain dot uh, what else? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, actually dot handle. Okay, gotta say dot handle. So replace all. Alrighty, that's pretty much it. Now parameter is never used, and parameter is never used. Is that really it? Like really? <laughs> really? Bro, no way. I have already done it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Thank god, mate. Thank god. <laughs> I didn't screw it up. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> if there is anything that I've missed, it's gonna come and bite me later on. Hopefully it's gonna bite just, you know, gently. <laughs> All right, nice stuff. Oh my god, this is really like lovely. Um, it's a callback. Got the config, the API version. Okay, look at this. It's much cleaner right now. I really love that swap chain service key family instance physical device device queue. Okay, so interesting stuff indeed. And uh, we can at least put the defines in its own file for now. So how we can do that, like the declarations. So let's go to SRC and maybe let's put a header file. Let's call it, hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. I don't know what to call it, to be honest. Let's call it maybe toolkit. <laughs> I don't know. Weird. Uh, toolkit. Okay, fine. Let's go with that. And instead of this junk, I'm just gonna say pragma once. Okay. Lovely stuff. And now I'm gonna start by taking these. Uh, in fact, no. The toolkit.h is just gonna be, you know, like it's just gonna hold all the headers that we need, basically. Uh, starting by the headers that we need here, like GFW and blah, 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 all of these craziness. Okay, I can put it here, just like that. And and for this exit callback and expect and... Hmm. Exit callback and expect an error callback. It's quite interesting that it was that easy to refactor. <laughs> I don't know, bro. Oh, man. Lovely. Okay, so define expect. I should have actually, you know, made the new git commit to be honest. Yeah, actually, let's just go and do that just to make sure if I screw something up, really. Yeah, that is true. Although it's highly likely that I'm going to screw this step. But you never know. You never know, right? Yeah, you never really know. What could happen? Okay, let's just make sure that we're all good. Delete the toolkit, please. And and also let me let me make sure to also order the functions. Let's take this opportunity to order the functions. Okay, so the thing is, what I'm gonna do basically is I'm gonna reorder the functions depending on their relevance to each other. First of all, and second of all, depending on their dependencies. Okay. So basically the most dependent on functions should be on top somehow. Uh, so basically you gotta create for example, the instance first, I think. Mm, but yeah, so the clean up the loop and all of these stuff, or in fact, let's just, for example, for now, just let, let's just go ahead and order the functions depending on their relevance. For example, this window should close thing should hopefully go with the the, the window stuff. So, in fact, you know what? Let me do something really cool. Let's collapse all. And there we go. This is much nicer. Uh, all right, lovely. So I have on my clipboard right now the window thing. So window create. And after window create, we can just put that guy there. 
And in fact, I'm going to put the constructors, which is basically create and destroy functions on with each other. And also, I forgot to actually rename these these functions. But yeah, let's first of all, let's uh, finish up these guys. So window should close after it should be destroy. Where is destroy? Window destroy. There we go. Let's actually copy this guy. Let's put it with after create directly. It would be nice to, as I said, to have the, the, the constructors with the deconstructors directly. And then, of course, the other functions uh, after that. So create swap chain. This is relevant to the window. So let's make sure to, to get that too. Uh -huh. Create the swap chain. Oh, but it's needed by window create, as you can see there. Okay, interesting. So let's make sure to actually do it before window, before creating the window. All right, interesting stuff. And where we're actually destroying the, the swap chain though. I think we don't have a function for that already. Maybe. Uh, VK destroy. Uh huh. Can I find something like that in the cleanup? Well, the cleanup should be in window. Yeah, there we go. I'm actually doing it here. So, hmm. Yeah, I'll just let's just do that anyways. You have W destroy window. And in fact, no need really, really no need because you know it's one thing. Actually, it's not one thing. It's this whole thing. All right. <laughs> Okay, so uh, swap chain destroy. And of course, I'm gonna actually from now on, I'm gonna adopt this kind of naming scheme where you have basically the object first, then the action or the object first, then some variants, then the action. Basically, the action should be at the, at the end instead of the start. I'm also gonna help in a lot of ways. For example, the, the simplest thing would be just uh, it's like a chain of objects, you know, and it will help a lot with auto completion, for example, and classifying functions, etc. But anyways, uh, so swap chain destroy. Let's make sure to create a swap chain destroy here. Okay. All right. Lovely stuff. You put in the state here and then. And there you go. Lovely stuff. Awesome. 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 As you can see now, it's much, much cleaner this way. VK destroy surface KHR. Swap chain window destroy. So where we're creating the swap chain, we're creating it here. Okay, so let's actually make sure to put the destroy swap chain after it directly. Because why not? Okay, create surface. Same thing, but you know, destroying the surface is really, really simple. Hmm. But we can still just make sure to do that, though. Mm, I mean, yeah, I guess that makes sense to always have, you know, create and destroy whatever in any way. So, yeah, fine. Let's go ahead and do that. Swap chain destroy uh, state and the not swap chain uh, surface destroy. So surface destroy. OK, because the thing is, the best thing is to actually group stuff using the, the, the object instead of the action, you know. So, uh, yeah, swap chain destroy. So surface destroy, how are we going to do that? Avoid surface destroy. Boom. And then we have the state. Nice stuff. Lovely, 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 lovely. And there we go. So for surface destroy, I'm going to make sure that it's uh, after create surface. And I love to put the, the, the constructor and the deconstructor with each other because it's much easier to like, you know, for example, if you create or malloc something in the constructor, then you can easily go ahead to the deconstructor, which is just after it and then just change, change it too, uh, which is interesting. So here let's actually refactor this one to use that naming convention so um we're gonna rename that guy 
we can actually say surface create surface create okay i'm gonna be back in a second all righty back back into business all right so we have surface create surface destroy interesting same thing i'm gonna do with this one refactor swap chain uh create Oh my god, I'm, I'm so, like, I didn't expect it to be this nice. Swap chain creates, lovely. And really, an IDE really goes a long way to actually help you, especially with such big refactors, you know. I mean, imagine doing this without an IDE. I cannot even imagine that. So, render, destroy, context, destroy. Uh, where's the context uh, create? Uh, window destroy window should close where is context create there we go uh but which one should go there though yeah context destroyed this one so let's make sure to put that after create there we go lovely so as you can see we have context create context destroy here we have get queue, create device, execute family. In fact, these things are in fact dependent. Uh, yeah, on context create. It's used by context create, so that is nice. Log in the info. This one is kind of like a utility function, so I'll just put it upward. Render create. Uh, it should have a render destroy too. Well, first of all, let me actually put this guy right here. Uh, oh my god, what I'm doing. Let's put this guy somewhere around here. Nice. Log in the info, the exit callback, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, so set up the error handling clamp. Okay, so render destroy. Let's grab this render destroy thing. In fact, yeah, it doesn't make sense to put it there. So the same thing with uh, render create. There we go. Let's make sure that's the first one. Okay. So render destroy, render create first. Nice. Uh, surface create, surface destroy, window should close. In fact, window should close. This guy should probably go to the, to the start there. Nice. And there you go. So this is basically the window stuff. Mm hmm and 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 what's next this is basically the context stuff right and this is the application stuff okay so init loop cleanup main all that our application stuff okay context create context destroy window create window destroy render create render destroy lovely render okay and these are basically the utils for setup error handling and and this clamp function these guys should actually go to the top to the top okay log info clamp all of these are just kind of like utils function, maybe. Although, where am I using this? I'm using it here. Okay, nice. So let's make sure to actually put them in the same kind of place. Uh huh. GLWR callback and then the exit callback too. Uh, same thing here. Uh, okay, in fact, let's just fine. Let's put it somewhere around here. Okay. And that's basically it. Set up error handling, clamp, and, and expect this. All these things are kind of like the utils. So I can, in fact, create a. But let me make sure everything is working fine now, currently. Yeah, everything looking great. And I'm so surprised right now. Set up error handling and clamping and stuff like that. Let's copy this whole thing. And let's put it into some kind of util. So, 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 so. Did I, by the way, did I commit? Yeah, I, 
I think I did. I don't know. But anyway, yeah. Anyway, new C header file. Um, utils, right? So utils dot h. And so utils. Remove this junk. Pragma once, please. Thank you. And let's go. Thing is, who cares about date, bro? Who cares about the date that I created this stuff? And of course, I do need the Vulcan here. And things like this, that's for sure. But in fact, we're also going to have a toolkit kind of header. Uh, which basically going to be pragma once. And here, here we're going to include utils. Okay, lovely. And basically, inside of here, I'm going to actually do the same thing for these guys. Now, this is kind of like the, the headers, right? So let's actually create another file, maybe. Uh, C++ header file, headers.h, maybe. And... Uh, I'm open to any kind of contributions, by the way. Um, so pragma once include the CDIO, main.c utils, toolkit. Now before utils, let's actually include uh, headers.h. And there we go. All right, lovely. Now inside of main.c, let's make sure to look at that one over 48 errors. Let's include the toolkit that we created. Okay.h, that should fix everything. Lovely stuff. We're still having a working product. Uh, Parameter is never used. Yep, yep, yep. Render, destroy, render, create, and stuff like that. Okay, nice, nice, nice. So that those was the headers, and these are basically the structs. And now I'm actually gonna put this with the headers, maybe. Yeah. In fact, in fact, I'm going to split this into maybe declarations and stuff like that. Yeah, maybe. Actually, you know what? Uh, hmm. Let's see what we can do. What we can do. Can we split this? I remember it could do that, actually, but how? No. So basically, here's how you actually do that type diff. But you know what? Let's just let's just for now let's just go ahead and do it the normal way. And let's not, you know, go crazy now. And so as you can see right now, this is the our headers for now. Mm, okay. And in fact we have the context, we have the render. The window, the swap chain. So we have the config first. Then actually you should have the con the, the config, then the context, then the then the window. Actually then the swap chain, then the window. Okay. And then the render, of course. Okay, lovely stuff. Now this is some amazing stuff. Uh right. Actually I hate in splitting declarations with uh from implementation because too simply, you know, whenever you want to edit something, it's just a nightmare. You have to change it in both places. So for now, maybe I'm just going to stick to implementations and declarations at the same time. Uh, so yeah, some stuff. It's much cleaner this way. Toolkit. Headers. Okay. Nice. Now I can actually create a file for each one of these guys. So for example, I can create a file for the the, the context. Oh man, pragma once. Uh-huh. Now let's go back to our main.c. Where's the context? There we go. This is the context. There you go. And for, by the way, uh, 
but yeah yeah fine 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 actually the context should be last but yeah anyways let's just include context right here and of course there we go context.h and we're still fine looks like nice lovely and this is the window by the way what i've done for uh, the context again yeah no need for discounts anymore by the way lovely next up is the window mm -hmm. in fact start by the render fine let's start by the render let's create a new header file render Mm hmm pragma once this is by far the biggest refactoring and the best refactoring i've done at least i think i'm not sure about the best but surely the longest but yeah so state okay fine and uh, make sure to add it to headers though uh, i mean the uh, toolkit right yeah the toolkit so context then well the render basically we're gonna have the render dot h okay nice stuff i don't need this guys anymore for now context details okay just the toolkit okay uh next up is the window basically and look at that it's getting much smaller Mm hmm header file window okay uh -huh. and the toolkit after the render let's include window.h and all looking great nice awesome stuff and of course we have our application which we can do the same thing for and we can leave just the main function inside of here inside the main c okay lovely now i don't have to travel to another continent just to get to a piece of code <laughs> oh man c plus plus header file uh so what we need now application dot h pragma wounds let's go okay toolkit window context mm -hmm. application include application H nice main main function in it date and everything is all good awesome all right so we're pretty much done this this mat this um crazy refactor okay so now look at this we have a much nicer uh, way of doing this okay so if I actually make sure to re to code Mm, can I yeah. let's see uh, refactor code navigate let's see let's see let's see view how do you actually oh my god what I did what I clicked there I have no idea let's hope that's not uh, something that would Okay, anyway, folding. Mm -hmm. And expand all. And look at that. Now, this is the window file. <laughs> and by the way, I also want to split the swap chain create function into multiples, I think. And maybe, 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 maybe. Swap chain create. Yeah, I think it would be much nicer, probably. So, yeah, toolkit h window dot h pretty cool stuff 
So this is the context, headers, header render, toolkit, uh, two utils, window.h, and all that amazing stuff. All righty, amazing, amazing, amazing. So what I would like to actually do now is probably and take this function of the swap chain and just split it into fragments into multiple functions just so it's much more digestible <laughs> okay alrighty interesting uh -huh. avoid swap chain create okay lovely okay so let's grab the void create uh or actually capabilities mm -hmm. capabilities create date or actually not create this this one this one is get basically because when you say create, you're basically kind of like saying that you have a destroy also, but in this case, we don't for sure. So yeah, lovely. Okay. Um, now, how do I do this exactly? In this case, no, it doesn't need the state, which is interesting. All right, lovely. So well, now I have two, actually two options. I can either just return here VK service capabilities, KHR, which I think would perfectly, would be perfectly fine. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. So yeah, fine. Let's go ahead and do that. VK service capabilities, KHR. Basically going to do this. No, in fact, I do need the state. Yeah, I do need the state after all. Yeah, I do. I do, I do, I do. Well, since I need the state anyways. Hmm. But no, it's just for read only. Yeah, for read only. So since it's read only, I can just say constant. Const state. Okay, lovely. And then here I can just return capabilities. Now, basically, I can make sure to say capabilities. Well, AK service capabilities, KHR capabilities equal to capabilities get and pass in the state, please. Thank you. In fact, we can also to an effort to refactor the code even more instead of, you know, for example, here, at least pa instead of passing the state, can pass in maybe the context and the surface just so we can know that capabilities actually depends not on the whole application but just on the context and on the window because this is a really nice uh, concise thing like independent fragment of code so in fact that is really really although hmm, not sure not not sure. Well, anyway, we're gonna see later on, maybe, or let us try. It, actually, let's just try it. So, context. So context, context, context. Can maybe say this. We're gonna not gonna change it. So. Mhm. Mm so basically, here you pass in the context. And then, of course, you pass in the, what it needs also. It needs the window, which is interesting, okay? So it needs the window. I can also just, you know, say surface and just pass the surface here. But for now, let's just keep it this way, okay? Um, let's go not go deeper and deeper and deeper const window window surface here it's basically context physical device and of course 
physical device. Okay, so context physical device and okay, interesting. Let's make sure to pass in the that and state window, same thing. That capabilities get okay, nice. Let's make sure everything is still working though before advancing forward. All right, looking awesome, looking nice. Mm -hmm. Next up is basically the formats. So the format is all of these things. Okay, nice. So let's actually grab this whole thing and let's say VK format. Format is equal to, oh my god, no. Uh, okay, format select. I think, yeah, format select. It's gonna create such a function, void format select. And there we go. Now, in this case, we need the state and the window. You know what, to be honest, let's just keep on going with the states, probably. Uh, because we're going to end up with all, all this mess that every time we need something from the state, we have to actually redo everything. So you know what, let's just keep the state for now. And uh, yeah, let's just keep on the state. Okay, nice. so state. And now this is going to turn into a point. Same thing here state window and then this will actually turn into a point and that's pretty much it capabilities and returning capabilities capabilities get declared here okay for this one this one this one this one we actually say state just pass in the state please thank you no need to go crazy about that Okay, same thing I'm going to do with the other functions for now. Let's just keep it so simple. All right, all right, nice stuff. So format, format select and select state. Okay, because it does need the state after all. Although in this case, looks like it's read only for now. Mm-hmm. Uh, for now, I'm not sure about the future, but for now it is constant. It's read only. And this will, of course, return a VK format. And instead of doing this, we're basically going to return. The f or actually, we cannot return. We have to first of all get that and then free, then return format. All right, nice stuff. Actually, it's VK surface format KHR, not that. Vacate surface format, KHR. Okay. Form a surface. So these are basically surface though, surface capabilities get. And this one is surface format select. Okay. So surface, uh, surface capabilities get in here uh, surface format selects again if you guys have any kind of you know that suggestion let me know or you see any kind of bug that I didn't make and like notice initialize in VK format now instead of VK actually this VK surface format KHR there we go nice stuff so that is lovely. Same thing with the uh, present mode. Let's go. This will make it much, much cleaner. Mm -hmm. Present mode. Okay, so surface uh, present modes select state. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Create new function. Create. Do this. Mm -hmm. Return. Now, how do I return and what do I need to return? Mm 
Oh, somehow it actually created it down here, and it probably also created a, a declaration that I don't need, maybe. But anyway, let's just put it here for now. Is there any other kind of thing, maybe? Yeah, it did put a declaration here, which I don't need. Mm -hmm, nice. So, surface present mode, select. Okay. Mm -hmm. Three. So, where does it need that present mode here? It needs it here. And we're not returning it here, though. Yeah. We're not. Okay, so return. But in fact, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm actually going to say vk present mode, khr present mode. Okay, is equal to, you know, present modes. Mm hmm. Although we have a mode. No, no. So present modes, I. Uh, I mean, <laughs> present mode index. Okay. There we go. Redefinition of present mode. Oh, okay. Interesting. So, uh, present mode. Oh, I see, I see. So I don't need to actually just re and return present mode. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, lovely. Mm, this is all good. Another thing that I want to make sure to do is to to expose the format like the capabilities the format not the present mode i don't need it i think i'm not sure but i don't think i need it so f at least for capabilities and format i need it in the renderer okay i need it for the renderer so i may just expose that in the future or maybe in a second but anyway let's see for now let's see what we have next okay so what is this what are we doing here we're trying to allocate memory for swap chain images and swap chain image views. Now this whole thing is basically creating the image views. Well, almost. Uh, the first one is actually creating the images, but, mm, but it's kind of like related, right? Image count, malloc, then we basically get swap chain images. So here we're basically getting the swap chain images. So let's put that into its own thing. Okay. So void swap chain images get. Let's go state, state, state. Let's go state, state, state. All right, nice stuff. There you go. There you go, there you go. And the next step is, let me make sure to actually call that function now. Swap chain images get, pass in the state, and of course, swap chain images create, image views to be exact. So swap chain image views create state. Okay, void. <laughs> Swap chain image views create you pass in the state just like that and you do this now I actually need also need the format which is interesting so I can just pass in here maybe but instead of actually passing it here as you can see I do need it after all in all, all sorts of ways um, so um maybe we're gonna go to the headers yep and the swap chain i think what i'm gonna do here i'm gonna actually add a vk format or format and also a vk color space color space don't need khr so these two guys i really need them I also need the extent, which is basically how the dimensions of the images. And for that, I can maybe say VK image, actually not VK image, oh my God. Um, let's say, hmm. 
<laughs> and for that, I can actually add another. No, no, no. I can just use a VK extent, right? VK extent to D. I'm going to say this is basically D. Uh, image extent. All right. Awesome stuff. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, really. It's all I really need for now. From this watch. Now I'm going to fill these three guys, okay? I'm going to fill them from, let's see, let's see, let's see. So instead of doing this, let's just say state window dot swap chain dot format. Let's go. And yep, yep, yep. Actually, I also am interested into the components mapping. We could have a lot of fun with this later on to show you what it really is about when we have a triangle ready. Uh, so we can actually, you know, it's quite interesting, but uh, actually I would like to put that into the config, okay? Because we, we want to change it later on, maybe. So state for now, let's just say state config dot swap chain mm, components. Mapping, components mapping, okay, and then let's basically make sure to create a new field, and that's basically VK component mapping. Okay, lovely. Now, in fact, in main.c, of course, I'm gonna make sure to say swap chain components mapping is equal to VK components mapping, and there you go. Lovely. All right. Interesting stuff. And that's pretty much all the things that I, uh, okay. Uh, what's next? I forgot to actually fill up the format and stuff like that. So let's actually say state swap, uh, well, window dot swap chain dot color space or color. Uh, let's start by format. We just can see. Format of format, and to be honest, instead of seeing this format of format thing, this let's just say surface format here. Uh huh. Surface format, just so it's a little, little less ridiculous. <laughs> um. So yeah, the format. Uh huh. And just to keep things. Just to keep things synchronized, just to make sure everything is still synchronized, I'm just going to do it like that. And for this one, same thing, and it's just instead of format, we're going to say color space, color space. I believe that's all I need for surface format. Yeah, it's the only things anyway, so yeah. Um, that's pretty much it. I just found it absurd that, you know, you know, like it's called surface format and then you have to see dot format once again to get the actual format. <laughs> uh, kind of weird, but yeah, anyway. Uh, I don't know what to call it, to be honest. I mean, they have an excuse, I guess. But anyways, <laughs> um, color space. Anyone have a better name for, for this guy? Let me know. That would be cool also to just make it more readable. Um, and and also this one. Oh my God, this one, this one, this one, this one. Okay, so here, this is state swap chain. Uh, actually, state config dot swap chain buffering. Okay, swap chain buffering. And we're basically gonna create that new field. Uh-huh. As you can see, lovely stuff. Now I can just say dot swap chain buffering is equal to three, which is basically triple buffering. Nice, 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 nice. Uh -huh. Or basically we can even go ahead in the headers. Uh, we can do some nice touch. This is not needed, but it's just nice readable thing. Okay, so in um, swap chain buffering, swap chain buffering. Uh, and just to to keep up with the so swap chain buffering 
Mm, what's going on here? Swap chain. <laughs> Swap chain. Okay. And then here I'm just going to say swap chain buffering. And again, I'm going to say double, for example, which is basically equal to two. And there's also swap chain buffering triple. Actually, let's call it double buffering. Like this. Ripple buffering. Like this. And now instead of you know putting there three three, I can just say swap chain triple buffering for example. And there you go. This is much nicer. Okay, uh, I think we're done at this point. Lovely stuff. Is there anything wrong with the full screen? I don't think. Let's see. And yeah, all good. Looking all great. Nice, nice, nice. And I think hopefully that's pretty much it, maybe. That was a lot of work, right? But it, it was much nicer than I expected, actually. Not that bad, so. Yeah, lovely stuff. Um, I think we're all good at this point. We're pretty much ready to create our render. Uh, this is basically the setup that we needed. Um, now, please make sure to go down in the comments or even go to the GitHub and maybe even open an issue and suggest something or even just, you know, like change the code a bit and just pull request, make a pull request. And if it aligns with my future, you know, future plans and it seems reasonable to add or to merge or whatever, I'm going to surely add it and I'm going to be so glad to add it. So yeah, uh, especially if it's some kind of bug fix, bug, bug fix, you know, uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it, I think, for today's video. If I don't notice anything that is wrong. All right. And did I forget anything? Hmm. I mean, that is interesting. Window destroy, for example, to destroy the window, you so you destroy the swatch. Oh, by the way, did I actually... By the way, let's make, oh yeah, it's already the window destroy, right? So window create, by the way, are all of the naming like this? Swap chain create, swap chain destroy, swap chain images get, surface present mode select, surface format select, surface destroy, surface create, window should close, nice. So the window is fine, I think. Swap chain config, swap chain buffering. Okay, lovely. Let's see the context. Make sure. Okay, instance create instead of create instance refactor. Rename. Mm. Oh man, what I did. Bruh. Like what? Let me make sure this is still working. Oh my god. That was hilarious. Okay, create instance. Please refactor. Rename. Rename. Instance create. Physical device select. Mm, refactor this too. Oh man, I, I thought I was done. Physical device select. I really thought I was done. Okay, select queue family. Refactor. I'm just trying to make sure that all the refactor I want to do, I'm going to do it this time. Hopefully, Q family select. So we're ready for the next part about graph, uh, about the renderer. Q family select. Okay, here device create. So refactor device create. Okay, get Q. Now Q get. 
Q. Mm -hmm. By the way, you don't need to actually use the same naming convention as me. I just think this is much more superior than any other kind of naming, but I don't know. Um, so yeah. Instance physical device queue, device queue, nice. Mm-hmm. Context destroy. Context create nice stuff. The render, of course, render create, render destroy, toolkit. Toolkit. Yep, nice stuff. Utils. Actually, instead of this, I can say info log. Yeah, nice. Refactor, rename. Just, I'm trying to be so consistent here. Info log. There you go. Exit, callback, callback, exit. Um, not exactly sure how I would deal with this guys, to be honest. Error handling setup, for this one at least, error handling setup. Refactor error handling. And clamp. Okay, everything looking great. And by the way, another thing that I almost forgot is that this is not this in the standard, okay? This is not in standard C, I think. At least I think. So make sure to actually replace this with funk like this. That would be nicer. Uh -huh. So yeah, let's make sure that this is right. Nice, nice, nice. Lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And just to make sure we don't have any kind of actually any kind of uh, naming clash in the future, I'm just gonna make sure to say something like this: mac macro error code, just so I make sure that I don't have some kind of clash macro error code in the future hopefully equal error and by the way instead of doing it this way which is kind of not readable not too much readable so we can just say this macro error code then we can say error it's basically the same thing it's just i think much nicer to read okay uh make just make sure to actually fix this I wish they would fix themselves, but anyways, so expect error format, that, 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 nice, macro error code, lovely. Pretty much cool, cool, cool. So yeah, that was it, I think. A log, is there any other thing that I missed? Window, I think I already got through window. Yeah, I did. Toolkit headers application, maybe? No. All good. Loop. GFW pull events. Oh, interesting pull events. Well, for that one, hmm. I can just say window pull events. And just for the sake of completeness, let's just pass in the state, although we don't really need it. Uh, window, pull events, create new function. Well, let's create inside the window, the H. And now where could I, could I create that? Actually? Uh, let's see where I actually put it should close, and then we can put it there near that. Yeah, and in fact, it's the first one. So that is going to be the basically here, maybe. Okay, so bool, actually not bool, void. Uh, window, pull events. You basically get in the state. In the future, I may actually change this state stuff to, to get the actual parameters that are really needed. But for now, I'm just... And because if you do that, then, you know, there's just a lot of headaches. We'll just keep it this way, actually, uh, for now. So 
Uh, but what we can also do, we can make it constant, you know? Constant. Just to make sure, you know, that it's actually read only. No, this one is not read only, for example, right? So, surface destroyed, this one too, I think. Surface capabilities get is this one, yeah. Surface format select. Oh yeah, it's already const. Uh, surface present mode probably. Okay. Swap chain images get. No, this is not read only. Images view create same thing. Swap chain create same thing. Window create. Okay, this is all good. Okay. All great stuff. Never used. All right, this one is never used for now. Uh, but yeah, all good stuff. In it loop. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I I believe we're we should be all good at this point. What I changed here though. Oh yeah, added SRC utils. I uh, I added also SRC toolkit. By the way, these is these are added like automatically by the IDE. So, uh, yeah, SRC render. It basically added all the headers. It's not really needed, but yeah, there you go. Um, so that's pretty much it for CMake, and of course here for all these craziness. <laughs> uh, look at that. I mean, we grab this whole main function into this name like, this is just amazing okay refactor uh mega refactor no i don't know <laughs> let's go and make a refactor right mega refactor commit and there we go there we go now let's make sure the last time that it's running correctly there we go now hopefully i can just push push to the repo because right now when you commit it just you know you know like it registers a new version but it doesn't actually register that version online you know it just all local you know now let's actually Push all of that. Let's see. And there we go. Push to comets. Nice. Lovely. Now I don't need this anymore working. And there we go. We're done. Now we're actually ready for the next parts of the tutorial. So, yeah. Goodbye, everyone. Ila liqa.